Whenever I meet with groups of parents, I always ask them at the end of the seminar to write down some questions that I didn't get a chance to answer during the question and answer, and I decided that I'm going to use these videos as sort of a um, Ask Joni kind of time. So today's question is about uh, the car and the iPod, and here's the question that this parent asked. The minute my son enters the car, the iPod headphones go on. He has no interest in talking. When he was little, car time was always talking time. When I ask him to talk to me, he says, what are we going to talk about? So here's the answer to the iPod and the car question. When your middle schooler or your high school gets in the car after school, they are emotionally and physically probably exhausted as well. They have spent their entire day putting on a persona, a persona of being cool or um, being smart or being athletic or whatever it is that they're trying to uh, show to their friends and to the kids in the school. And so by the time that day is over, and maybe they had some moments during the day that didn't go well, maybe they got, were humiliated during practice, you know, they didn't do well, or maybe the boy or the girl that they have a crush on paid them no attention or maybe they you know spilled something in the cafeteria and all the kids you know kind of chuckled at them or it could have been a million things nothing of any importance but each one of those if you add up at the over the course of the day becomes you know a heavy load so when they get in the car they are exhausted and so what they do is they they want to avoid you the bottom line is that you're right they don't want to talk to you you're you've, you're totally right on about that and so they know that when you get in the car you're gonna say how was your day and what did you do and how much time do you have they they know you well enough to know that you're gonna ask a thousand questions so they protect themselves and they put their iPods on and honestly I think it's fine. I think they need that time. And think about it when you get in the car, maybe you're on your way to work. I know for me, drive time alone in the car is, is a way to just kind of block out the entire world. I shut my phone off, I turn NPR on, I put the oldie station on and sing. I do what I need to do to kind of protect myself from the outside world so I can sort of regenerate and re-energize. And that's really what your kids are doing too. So it's not that they're necessarily being rude or it's true that they are avoiding you, but it's more about they just need time to themselves because they know as soon as they walk into the door and the house, they're going to have to get on Facebook and they're going to have to text and they're going to have to deal with you about the homework and, you know, their schedule for the week and all those millions of things. So I, I say leave it alone. Just get that they need that time to themselves and maybe stop on the way home for an ice cream or a cup of coffee and you know that might be a time to just take a time out and say so you know how was your day or share something about your day. So I, I, I think it's fine. I think they need that time and you might even just say that to them. You know I was thinking about you putting your iPhone, you know your iPad or iPod, see there's too many eyes, um, on as soon as you get in the car and I realized you know that's fine you just kind of need some time to yourself so I'm not going to bug you about that anymore. And what that does is let them know that you understand what they might be going through and they will thank you for that in their head. They won't actually thank you for it. Now there's another part of this that um, I think uh, when you have a teen who is getting close to the driving age and I've had a parent suggest this to me. I thought it was a brilliant idea. She, when she has a child who's in you know 15 and a half or maybe 16 is about to get their uh, learner's permit she thought that it would be really important for them when they're in the passenger seat of the car to make a rule that if you choose to drive in the front seat with me as a passenger, then we have no iPhones, no iPods, uh, that this is a time for you practicing paying attention to the road and I think this is a brilliant idea because I think what happens with kids in cars is they are you know, with their iPhones and their 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 cell phones, they that's just an extension of themselves. So they are so used to getting into the car and either texting or listening or doing whatever they're doing that when they start to get in the car to actually drive, this is going to be hard for them to break that habit, especially with their cell phone. So I think that if you have a teen who is about ready to drive, you might say, you know what, honey. I'm excited for you to get your license. You're going to be taken off in the car by yourself and I, I can't wait. I won't have to carpool you. But on the other hand, I need to know that when you get in the car, you can stand being without any technology for, you know, whatever drive you have in your car. And so if you choose to sit in the front seat with me and drive, then I'm going to ask for you to shut your phone off and shut your eye 
pot off so that, you know, I promise we don't have to talk. We can put music on. It's not about that. It's really, I just want to know that you can put those things down so when you're driving, that's what's getting your full attention. So there you have it. Short and simple. It's fine. Your kids need time out. We all need time out. And for me, cars sometimes are that sort of cocoon. You shut the windows, you turn the radio on, you put the heat on. And that's if you're living here where it's freezing cold. And you use that time to just calm yourself down and sort of get into a meditation, which is really what your kids are doing. So leave them alone. And if they're going to drive soon, make them sit up front with you and start to pay attention to the road. You don't have to talk about it. You don't have to lecture them about it. Just let them be in the car with you so they start having that kind of experience technology free. So I hope that was helpful. Next week, we'll have another question from uh, an interested parent.